Welcome back YouTube to an everyday life of an SP. If you're new, I welcome you all. I'm SP. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness, sharing my life stories with Asperger's syndrome, as well as advocating for you all and educating based on my life story with Asperger's syndrome, along with hopefully insaneness, tips and advice with some fun and games in the near future. If you're into any of these that I'm sharing with you all today, smash the subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner and turn on the notification bell for future updates to come of these following that I've shared. So it is a given right now that I'm going to be talking about stages of meltdown because everybody gets so confused about meltdowns versus tantrums, the differentiation between the two, right? And in this case with children with special needs basically it's the lack of understanding, lack of awareness and just maybe some people's ignorance of the ones that may not have children with special needs which is sad and true. So in this case today I'm referring to people with autism as you're aware because obviously you know hence the title stages of autistic meltdowns. There'll be probably more than the ones I'm clearly suggesting right now of these stages but bear with me. If anyone that are autistic or specializes in the area based on what they know of of these meltdowns, if I've missed out any stages, feel free to comment them below. That would be much appreciated so that we can get the ball rolling right now. As I have clearly mentioned in one of my videos though, there has been many different stages or types of meltdowns which I'll link in the eye bar above me as well as in the description of my box down below is so that you can understand what I'm talking about. As I've been sharing with you all based on my journey in advocating, mentoring and educating you all based on this however sharing my life with Asperger's syndrome not all people with autism again are the same when it comes down to basically what they're sharing right now of what they go through. I want to clearly say to you guys today that while I'm here with you that I want to be that advocate, mentor, support person for others either on the spectrum or even people with mental health in this matter that are hopefully serving a purpose for you all which is what I've just mentioned. Either you are struggling or just needing some answers for to the questions that you may be thinking to yourselves, you know, of the everyday situation you may face, you know, or what you have witnessed along the way with others, maybe he say, you know, in this case, why is that child acting differently to the others around me? Or why is that child having a tantrum or a meltdown in public? You gotta remember, as I said, tantrums and meltdowns are two different things, which I have clearly mentioned in one of the videos which again will be listed above me in the eye card or below me right now as well. I may not always have the answers however even though I may have experienced some of the things that some autistics have or I may not be trained but bear with me. Some things I may share may differ from person to person however they are experiencing different things in their life but I truly still understand that will believe that there is still a lack of knowledge around this as well as the lack of understanding yeah. awareness intact about others with special needs, in this case people with autism. Most parents or carers however may you know have children with autism in their care test to from what I've seen and heard shall I say so far today and in the last few days leading up to what I'm sharing with you all that they put these two words in a box of the behaviours of tantrums and meltdown in the same box but then they kept them exclusive. Again, I can't stress it enough, tantrums and meltdowns are two different things. Putting these two type behaviours in a box, be it the meltdowns and your tantrums, can be a recipe for disaster. If you've got their sensory input seminars going on around them, they're maybe stimming, they may be, you know, self-harming themselves when it comes to that rage and that stage where they're out of control of their outbursts. And this is basically all complex and hard to know what it is and, you know, how we're going to deal with it. A classic example I want to share with you all 
if you can imagine this right now, like, as I'm sharing this with you today, is the, like, to gain that better story, understanding is the story from Inside Out about a 12-year-old girl, Riley, from Pixar, obviously, mo that made it. We are met with her with some different range of emotions that she m meets along the way, and then, then she, like, leading up to where, as she is growing up, to the stage where she is now, she has a range of different emotions that's turned into one hell of a ride. Which you'll clearly see in the, hopefully, the clip I'm sh sharing so that you can get that better understanding for you all. But bear this with all this in mind though, however, while I'm sharing with you this. So that, as again, I want to give you the opportunity to gain a better understanding that kids with special needs that does have mountains and chimps at the same time can be known for if they're angry and hungry at the same time as the funny term I hear about, hungry or hangry. Uh, pr my pronunciation could be wrong. I um, apologise, but hopefully you'll get me. Hence, in this clear example of the clip, we'll see with Riley, obviously, getting fed by a dad. A lot of researchers and scientists, etc., uses the everyday terms of be of these behaviours of meltdowns and tantrums interchangeably rather than inclusively for people with autism or just people with sensory differences which I'll clearly show you now on some of the sites and I'll list them below. Parents and care carers alike are getting sick and tired of basically people's ignorance and lack of understanding to what this is all about hence why many of the parents and carers are now accepting of what it is. And some can be more severe than others though, however, of these behaviours of the tantrums and meltdowns when they go through these different stages. So, as we know, or should know by now, meltdowns are involuntary responses to overwhelming feelings and to overstimulating environments. As you guys can think this as a clear example while I'm sharing this. Imagine being in a busy environment such as maybe as I've used before, in a cafe. Look around your surroundings. What's going on around in that surroundings right now, you know? What do you actually see? Try and imagine how your child or someone with autism or sensory difference will feel in that busy environment, you know? Be in their shoes and actually and be patient with that child or whoever it may be. Obviously, you've got the loud clatter of dishes going on in the background, either in the cafe's kitchen or even just around you with people chattering, laughing. You've got the bright lights going on and the works. When this is all going on though, however, around you, imagine that child or with autism or sensory difference here trying to take up everything that's going on around them like a sponge of that sensory information, input and what have you. Because it's going all at once in that mind of receiving that messages. Obviously, in saying that, a sensory overload will occur with too much information and sensory input. Basically, they might likely to explode or be angry or, again, in this case, they may have a tantrum. Because, say, imagine like a little ticking time bomb. As you're not sure when and where it might likely to happen with them for having these meltdowns and tantrums to occur. Well, in this case of what I'm sharing with you all today, the mountain now. Some can be unpredictable. Also, with to the point with all that information that's going on inside their mindset, as well as that stimuli, that there's no actual filter for the child due to the white noise that's going on around them. Again, meltdowns are not tantrums. The most distinguishing difference is that meltdowns are uncontrollable, while tantrums are voluntary or purposeful and are often used to manipulate a given situation to achieve a desired outcome. In this case, that that child may want your attention. Meltdowns may be sensory or behavioural, however. Sensory sensitivities are mainly the key issue here for many people, including those with neurological differences, mental health problems, autism and other conditions. Sensory processing difficulties, however, are neurological by nature and, and include difficulties that are in receiving the information, processing it, and responding it to the right form or manner of that sensory input that's been sending to the brain. 
It's essential to understand how these sensory sensitivities may impact on the individual's behaviour too, and also the whole well-being of the person. Often with sensory meltdowns, however, it will be 0 to 100 fight, flight, fright response for them in a matter of split seconds. And you may not even know it's coming or may not even see it coming before it sometimes is too late. Behavioural meltdowns generally occur in response to overwhelming feel feelings due to the changes in the environment, increased anxiety and social interaction or just even communication difficulties. These often gradually will build up. There are, again, th I'm going to talk about today three stages, but there could be more of the meltdown, which are the build up, the meltdown, shutdown phase, and then the recovery stage. So in the base, this is known as the anxiety and defensive stage of the meltdown. It usually consists of physical, verbal, and behavioral signs from the child. This is the best stage that you can intervene with them. There are a number of ways to intervene as a tip here in this stage, depending on the type of amount done, hopefully, if you recognize it. These may include limiting the instructions to give to the child, redirecting, maybe taking a break from where you are, removing them from the situation of what triggered them in the first place of that meltdown here, say. Maybe a sensory toy, like a fidget toy that many people use, be it fidget spinners, fidget cubes or something. And, and everyday use of routine, where and when possible. If the build-up is in relation to the sensory sensitivities, however, then ideally you will have to change the environment to accommodate the needs of that individual or just remove the individual from that sensory input that's causing havoc. Sometimes this may not be always possible though, however, just to be in mind. In many circumstances, you may need to introduce some tools to help coping with the situation. These might include some of the examples I've shared, to the use of headphones maybe, to block out any noise or the introduction of break cards maybe, to use before the environment becomes too overwhelming for that. Stage number two is the meltdown shutdown phase. This phase or stage of the meltdown is when the behavior becomes explosive and then becomes uncontrolled. There's no point in trying to reason the child in this stage, however, many people still t tend to make that mistake. But the number one key rule here or priority is the safety for the child and yourself and those around them. Do not try to teach them new skills, however, or redirect the stage. Try not to take their behaviour personally, because obviously, you know, it's normal they're trying to let loose with their stimming versus their self-harming. It might come to the point. Suggested strategies in this stage, however, I can clearly give you is all based on where you are at that given moment of time for your safety, of protecting yourself, plan of action, prompt, being prompt, preventing and maybe the use of timers, if need be. But bear in mind, in this stage, it may take a while for them to calm down and whatnot. Everything is a timely manner. We need to be patient in this. Last but not least, stage number three is your recovery stage with the child. This is also known as tension re reduction. Each individual will react differently, however, at this st last stage. Everyone involved is likely to feel emotionally drained, tired, exhausted, and it usually generally consists of either withdrawing or sleeping. Children may feel a lot of guilt, shame, and remorse from the outburst that they had before this last stage, however. But do not, however, discuss the incident during the recovery. Wait until you're both rested and calm. Discuss what has happened. And maybe help to prevent it. Again, it's all about planning and whatnot. After the recovery stage, however, find an opportunity to discuss the meltdown with your child or the individual to reflect on what why it happened and to plan to avoid these meltdowns if possible in the future. The key is to recognise the signs in the build-up stage and intervene then to prevent that meltdown. 
Now, it turns out unpleasant experiences for anyone that goes through it, be it the child or the carer or the adult. However, just to be our mind. And can leave people feeling, again, exhausted, burned out, and they need time out for themselves to recuperate of what just happened. But don't forever be ashamed when some meltdowns may occur of different stages of what I'm sharing with you. Some, as I said, may stem, some may, may self-harm, but just find the way to know when to intervene and when not to intervene in this case to take over here. So what I want to share with you all quickly, br briefly, is be sensitive to what is going on around you or with the person with autism or any other special needs that, you know, has these meltdowns. Be sure to self-educate yourself about this and any other different behavioural actions that they might be showing to you. We need to be calm and cool and collected. We can't obviously go full force angry or whatever other mixed emotions that comes with it when these stages come. When mountains occur, however, as I said, we need to take time out for ourselves or even get the child or whoever that had that meltdown to acquire us and come a place for them to feel safe and rejuvenate and regulate their emotions and give them time to just cool off and then again as I said before in the last stage of the recovery phase to discuss what was going on. So this quickly ends the stages of meltdown. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Smash the like if you did. Comment below. Feel free to anyone that has basically a child with autism or sensory behavioral issues like ADHD or something like this to how you go know if there's any other stages I missed out on this feel free to comment below feel free to let me know also maybe some of the tips that I may have missed out here for you guys if you've got any that may be helpful feel free to also comment them below so look for the do guys thanks for support thanks for watching do what love love what you're doing until next time Peace.